Hey crafters, I am so excited for today's tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to make this tank top that I am wearing, but the beautiful part of this tank top is that I'm gonna show you not how to make it a certain size, like a medium or a size 12 or anything like that. I'm gonna show you how you can make this tank top exactly to fit your body. So here's a look at the finished project, what we are going to be making. I used Trubu yarn for this, and now that I'm done, y'all, I have to say I absolutely love Trubu. It was amazing to work with. So I hope you're excited for this project. Let's jump into this tutorial. All right, so to make my tank top, I am going to be using Trubu yarn. I'm really excited to give this a try. It's 100% rayon from Bamboo. It's a lightweight three yarn, and they recommend crocheting with a four millimeter hook. Now, I tend to go down a sizing when I make clothing for two reasons. One, I try to have a little bit more coverage and less holes in the fabric since I'm going to be wearing it, so I'll sometimes drop down for that reason. Another reason is I found that with crochet clothing, when I hand wash them, if I'm not careful in how I dry them, the weight of the water Water can cause the project to kind of sag and stretch out. But this time I'm going to stick with the four millimeter suggestion. I'm going to do this for two reasons. First, it gives it a really nice drape, which is one of the reasons people really like Trubu. And also because in my experience, I have shrunk many pieces of rayon clothing. Now granted they were rayon fabric, not crocheted from rayon yarn. So my thinking is if it does stretch out over time or end up a little on the big side, I probably could shrink it down and it saves me if I accidentally shrink it down. I hope it'll still fit. One more note on the yarn and hook before we jump into the project. I've seen a lot of people talking about how this yarn splits really easily, and you can see just how easily all the ply of the yarn separates. So if you find yourself working with the Trubu yarn and finding that it's splitting a lot, try swapping what hook style you're using. So this hook here is an inline hook. The other kind is tapered. This is tapered. So if you're starting with an inline hook and you're splitting the yarn a lot, try swapping to a tapered hook and vice versa. Now I would prefer to work with a tapered hook versus an inline hook, but this is my only four millimeter hook that I could easily find. So I'm gonna stick with this for this project. So the first thing we're going to do for this project is basically crochet a rectangle. And the length of our rows is going to be the height of our tank top. So it's basically gonna be from the top of your shoulders on down to your hips, wherever you want the bottom of the tank top to land. So I should be popping up with kind of an illustration of what measurement we're talking about. And of course, as I try this on as we make progress, you'll see what I'm talking about even more. So we're gonna work in double crochet. If you prefer, you can start off with a foundation chain, but if you know me, you know I really like those foundation stitches. So I'm going to make row one using foundation double crochet. So I'm starting by putting a slip knot onto my hook, and then I'm going to chain two. So this is one, and this is two. And then in the second chain from my hook, I'm gonna first yarn over and in the back nub of that second chain, insert right through there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's gonna get us started on foundation double crochet. So we're gonna continue working our stitches over to the left, but we don't need to do any foundation chains to start. That's the beauty of the foundation double crochet. So to work the next double crochet and all the remaining ones for the row, we're gonna yarn over, go to the base of the stitch we just worked. I have a little bit of splitting there, but that's okay. And I'm gonna insert in the bottom of that stitch. Then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And that's my second double crochet. And these are foundation double crochet. So it's very similar to a double crochet, but we change where we work and we do an extra yarn over, pull through one to take the place of the chain. So to show you that again, yarn over, insert into the base, of the previous stitch. And I like to go underneath both of those threads there on the bottom, but let me make sure not to split it. So right through there, the base of the previous stitch we just worked, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's our third foundation double crochet. And I'm gonna keep working foundation double crochet until my row is the length I need it to be. So that way my tank top will go from down by my hips all the way to the top of my shoulder. So I'm gonna finish up row one, show you where that ends up, and then we'll move on to row two. And if you want more resources on foundation double crochet, I will link to some videos for you. 
All right, so here is the progress I have made on row one. So I measured it against myself as you just saw and it ended up being 21 inches long. Now this fabric does have a lot of stretch to it, but it also has a good bit of elasticity to it. So you stretch it out and it kind of springs right back. So this yarn is working up really nicely. In my case, I ended up working 92 foundation double crochet. So if you didn't want to do the foundation row, you of course can start with a chain and then work your double crochet into that. But either way, you're done with row one when you've made it long enough for the size you want. And as with crocheting any clothing, you're gonna to wanna to constantly be pausing and checking and making sure that what you've crocheted is gonna fit you right. So hold it up to yourself, make sure you like the way it looks, and then we'll move on to round two. So for row two in the next several rows, they're gonna be really simple. We're basically going to be creating the shoulder strap piece and then part of the front panel of the tank top. And so what that means is we're just gonna make a rectangle by working evenly back and forth. So in my case, I had 92 foundation double crochet. So I'm gonna work several rows of 92 double crochet. So for round two, I'm gonna turn my work. And you know me, I like to use that alternative turning chain. So you can either do a turning chain here or use the alternative turning chain. The alternative turning chain is worked by first inserting where we wanna work our stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're gonna find the left vertical strand of what we just worked, insert underneath there from right to left, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's the alternative turning chain and that's gonna count as our turning chain and as our first double crochet stitch. So that's one out of 92 double crochet. Put a double crochet into my next stitch. So that's number two. Work my third double crochet for row two. A fourth double crochet. And I'm just gonna keep on working down until I've put one double crochet in every stitch. And once I'm done with row two, I'm gonna repeat this for rows three onward until this section is the width I want for my shoulder strap. So I'll pop up on camera here again and show you kind of what I mean and how we're measuring against ourselves. But for now, we're just gonna work several rows back and forth evenly. So let's take a look at what we've got here so far. So basically I've been working rows evenly and I just made a big rectangle and I've done a total of eight rows. This is going to be the thickness of like the shoulder strap portion. And y'all, I just gotta say, I am loving how the True Boo is working up. It is such nice fabric, phenomenal drape. I'm really excited to get this project finished. So as far as sizing goes, you're of course customizing it for your body. And so I'm showing on camera right now kind of how it's supposed to line up. So the shoulder strap isn't gonna come all the way underneath the armpit. We're gonna have another section that we work underneath the armpit, but it's gonna come straight down from the shoulder. So now you see me kind of flipping it over that's just me getting a rough idea of about how many rows it's gonna take me to get to the center point of my tank top because I'm going to create kind of a v-neck shape. So that's gonna clue me in on how many rows I need to continue working to get to the bottom of the v-neck. That's what that was about. And in my case, the width of the shoulder strap is eight rows and it's gonna take me about another eight rows to get to the center point of the front of the tank top. So now that we have kind of the strap or shoulder portion made, let's start working on the front of the tank top. Now you may have done eight rows, you may have done five, you may have done 12, however many rows you did for the shoulder strap, wherever your hook ends up after you're done with those, that's gonna be the bottom edge of your tank top. So this is gonna be the bottom edge of my tank top right here. And for me, it happens to be the same side with the starting tail. Now our tank top, we wanna keep it flat on the bottom and then up at this end, we're gonna work on creating the V-neck. So what you're seeing me do next on camera is put a marker where my V-neck is gonna start to go down. So it's gonna be the top portion of the neckline and then it's gonna go down into a V-neck from there. And I marked this with a piece of orange yarn because I couldn't find a stitch marker. But the important thing is when you mark this, you want the end where your working tail of yarn is, so the end where your hook is, to be at the bottom and you want it to be pointing towards the center. So you don't want it on the bottom outer edge, you don't want it on the top outer edge or the top inner edge. We need to line it up like this. So when we bring our project back to the table, the hook will be down at our left end and along that same side, our stitch marker should be up towards the right. So now let's start working on the decreasing sections that create the V-neck. So this is the bottom edge of my project and we're just keeping it straight. So I'm just gonna flip my work over and start double crocheting evenly across. And once more, I'm going to start with that alternative turning chain. So that's where I insert into my stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then find that left vertical strand there Insert underneath it from right to left, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull through two. That's that alternative turning chain again, and that counts as my first double crochet. So I'm going to start working double crochet evenly along. It's going to be really similar to what we've been doing up to this point. But once we start getting close to where we put our marker, so in my case it's that orange piece of yarn, once we start getting close there, we're going to change some things up because we're going to work on doing some decreases to create the neckline. So double crochet evenly on down, and then I'll show you what we do once we get close to our stitch marker. All right, so I've been working double crochet evenly on down, and we're getting pretty close to where I have my orange marker. So the orange marker indicates the spot where I'm going to work the final stitch for this row. And I need to do a decrease when I get to the top of the row, and that's going to create that slant to the neckline to create the v-neck. So you can do a decrease in the very last two stitches, but personally I like to do the decrease and then one more stitch after it. I think it just gives it a cleaner edge. So that means I need to work until I have three stitches left. So I'll have the orange one and then the two right before it. So I need to just keep working double crochet until I had those three stitches left. So I think I just had three more stitches to get to that point. So again, just continue working double crochet evenly. And now I have just three stitches left. So in these two stitches, I'm going to work a double crochet decrease. And to do so, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then pause. Then for my next stitch, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now I've kind of started working in both of these stitches. I'll have three loops left on my hook, and I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three, and that works my decrease. So now I just have one stitch left, which is where my orange marker is, and in that stitch, I'm going to work just a normal double crochet stitch. I can take that out now. And that's going to be the first row of kind of the center of the tank top and where we're creating the neckline and decreasing. So we're going to do that same process every time we work from the bottom up towards the neckline. Where from the bottom on up, we just work evenly. And then in the last three stitches of the row, we decrease and then work one double crochet. So now let me show you how we work when we're going the other direction, when we're starting at the neckline and working towards the end. So I'm going to start by turning my work over. And again, in these three stitches at the neckline end of the project, we're going to do a decrease. But again, I like to have a double crochet on the edge. So we're going to have a double crochet here, a decrease, and then double crochet evenly on down. So I'm first going to work an alternative turning chain to count as my first double crochet. And again, I'll have some links um, in the cards and in the description down below for more resources on this if you want to learn more about it. And then I'm going to work a double crochet decrease across my next two stitches. So yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, then yarn over, insert in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. So that takes care of the decrease at the neckline end. Now we're just going to work one double crochet in every stitch on down until we get to the bottom. And then once I get to the bottom of this row, I'm going to work back up by starting by working double crochet evenly. And then the last three stitches, I'll do a double crochet decrease followed by a normal double crochet. And then to start the following row, I will start off with a double crochet, then a double crochet decrease, and then work double crochet evenly on down to the end. So I've worked my first two rows of the decreasing section, and we're going to repeat the idea of these two rows until we get to the middle of our tank top. So briefly, I'll go over those two rows again. So for the first row, we're starting at the bottom. We're going to turn our work and start working double crochet evenly on down. Again, I'm starting with that alternative turning chain, but you can use a normal turning chain if you prefer. But starting at the bottom end of the tank top, we're just going to work double crochet evenly until we have three stitches left in this row. I now have just three stitches left in this row working from the bottom up, so now I'm going to work a decrease across the first two stitches join that stitch together, and then work one decrease in the final stitch. 
So that's how we handle decrease rows when we're working from the bottom to the top. Now let me briefly go over from the top to the bottom one more time. So I'm going to start by turning over my work. And in the first stitch, I'm going to work an alternative turning chain. Again, if you want to use a real turning chain, like the more traditional one, you're welcome to. I just really like the alternative turning chain. So that's gonna count as my first double crochet. And then I'm gonna work a decrease across the next two stitches. So working in the first stitch, working in the second stitch, and then yarn over and pull through all three. That's my decrease. And now all the way on down to the bottom of this row, I'm going to put one double crochet in every stitch that remains. And that's all there is to these decreasing rows. We're just gonna keep doing that until the decrease section is wide enough to reach the center of our tank top. And then we're gonna start doing some increasing rows. All right, we are starting to see this project come together. And basically what we've got going on now is we've created the first half of the front panel. So as you see me holding it up to me, basically I kept working these rows with decreases until when I line up the decreased edge, the low point with the midline of my body that I liked where everything was lining up. Now again, the shoulder strap isn't gonna have enough fabric beneath it to go all the way under the armpit. We're gonna add that on later, but I'm liking the way this is sitting. So now we're going to basically mirror what we've done so far to create kind of a mirror image. Now again, because this pattern is so customizable for yourself, we may have worked a different number of rows. So I worked eight rows for the strap and then another nine rows of decreasing. You may not have worked nine rows. You may have worked more, you may have worked less, and you may have worked an odd number of rows or an even number of rows. So if you worked an odd number of rows like I did, then you'll end up here at kind of the point of the decrease. Otherwise, if you worked an even number of rows, you're gonna end up down here along the bottom. That's totally fine, doesn't really matter either way. The important thing is just that I'm going to show two rows of increasing. One is increasing when we're starting at the neckline and working towards the bottom. The other row of increasing is when we start at the bottom and work up towards the neckline. So in my case, I'm going to start by working from the neckline on down and then just alternate between working down and working up. You may need to start with working up and then alternate working down, working up. Hopefully that makes sense the way I worded that, but this is gonna be really simple. So for increasing rows where we are working from the neckline on down, I will start by turning my work and I'm going to use an alternative turning chain in my first stitch to count as my first double crochet. So the first stitch just gets a plain old double crochet. Then in my second stitch, I'm going to work the increase. And so to work the increase, I'm just going to work two double crochet into the same stitch. So that's one, and this is two. After I work the increase, we're gonna go back to working double crochet evenly on down to the bottom. I'm gonna to work to the bottom edge, and then I'll show you how we work the increasing rows from the bottom towards the neckline. So I just finished working an increase row where we're working from the hemline on down to the bottom. And I just worked evenly until I got to the very bottom. So now to start a row of increasing where we're starting at the bottom and working up to the neckline, I'm going to start by turning my work and we're gonna start working double crochet evenly. And of course I like to make that first stitch be that alternative turning chain. And that takes the place of the turning chain and counts as my first double crochet stitch. And now I'm just going to keep working double crochet in every stitch until I have only two stitches left in this row. And then I'll show you how we do the increase on rows where we're working from the bottom up to the neckline. So on this increasing row where we're working from the bottom of the tank top up to the neckline, I have two stitches left. So in the second to last stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet increase, which just means I'm going to work two double crochet into the same stitch. So that's my first one, and then a second one right in that same spot with it. And then in my final stitch of the row, I'm just going to put in a double crochet into the top of it. So that's how we handle the two different types of increasing rows. We're just gonna alternate back and forth in between them. And however many decreasing rows you worked, that's the same number of increasing rows you want to work. In my case, I worked nine decreasing rows, so I'm also going to work nine increasing rows. So let me finish that up and then I'll meet you back and then we'll add the second strap to our tank top. All right, so I have finished my rows of increasing. Here's what we've got going on so far. So the last thing to finish up this front panel is we need to add the corresponding strap over here. 
Now the good news is no matter how many rows you did here, because of the way that we work these decrease and increasing rows and we have an even number, you will for sure end up down along the bottom edge of the tank top. So let me show you how to start working the band, but basically it's going to be the exact same as what we did for this first one. So however many stitches we did when we made that initial rectangle, that's how many stitches we'll end up making the next section up here. And however many rows you did for this first strap will be the same number of rows for the second strap. So to start the first row of making the strap, it's gonna be really simple. We're gonna start by turning our work and we're going to work double crochet evenly along. So again, I like to start with the alternative turning chain, takes the place of the turning chain and counts as my first double crochet stitch. And I'm going to put one double crochet in every stitch of this row, but then we're gonna to have to add some stitches. So let me work on down the side and then I'll show you how we add stitches to make the strap longer. All right, so I'm getting towards the end of the available stitches of the increasing section. And again, this is where we're just working evenly because we're creating the strap section. And as we get to the end, you might be tempted to do an increase because that's what we were doing for the previous several rows, but don't do any increases. Just put one stitch in every stitch that's available. So final stitch right here. But now I need to add some extra stitches to this row to match the extra stitches over here to continue the strap. And now of course there's no stitches left to work in. So the way we make this work is to use the foundation double crochet stitches. So first what we need to do though, is we need to figure out how many extra stitches we need to add to this row. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come to this first side and we worked in this stitch here. So we're not gonna count this one, but all the stitches before it, we're gonna count how many we have. So in my case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So in my case, I need to add 21 more stitches to this side here. Of course, your numbers will probably be different, but that's how we figure out how many stitches we need to add to the row that we're currently on. So like I said, the way we're adding these is by using foundation double crochet. So let me show you how we do this. I'm going to start by yarning over and then in the same spot where I worked the previous stitch, that final stitch, I'm gonna insert right there. And then I'm going to yarn over. But now instead of yarning over and pulling through two, I'm going to yarn over and pull through just one. Then I'll finish the stitch by yarning over and pulling through two, yarning over, pulling through two. So that's a foundation double crochet. That's my first stitch and in my case, I have 20 more to go. So I'm gonna yarn over, go to the base of the stitch we just worked. And if you look from the underside, it kind of creates a V shape. And I'm gonna insert my hook into the bottom of that previous stitch underneath that V shape there. Yarn over and pull up a loop. I'll have three loops on my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through just one. Then to finish it off, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So again, if you remember this from the beginning, it's very similar to how we work a normal double crochet, but the big changes are where we insert our hook and we have that extra yarn over, pull through one, which kind of creates the chain, if you will. So again, yarn over, insert in the base of the stitch we just worked. And with the true yarn, it can be a little tricky because it likes to split, but just stick with it, you'll get it. Then yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's my next foundation double crochet. I'll show you that one more time. Yarn over, insert in the base of the previous stitch I worked, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And as you can see, that is extending this row that we're working on. So in my case, I need to have an extra 21 stitches added on. I've done four of them so far. So go ahead and add your extra stitches by working the foundation double crochet. So I've worked my 21 foundation double crochet so I can have the strap be the same length as the first size. And that completes row one of my strap. So now we're going to work double crochet evenly back and forth the same number of rows that you worked for your first strap. So for my first strap, I worked eight rows of double crochet evenly back and forth. 
So for a second one, again, I will work eight rows of double crochet evenly back and forth. I've already got my first row done, so I'm gonna do rows two through eight off camera, and then I'll show you where we end up. All right, so let's take a look at how this top is coming along. We have finished the first panel at this point, and this front panel is symmetrical, and because this strap is eight rows wide, I also made this strap eight rows wide. So now that the front panel is out of the way, we need to also make a back panel. Now you have a couple of options. Your first option is to make an identical panel to the front panel. Do the exact same thing you did for these steps and just make an exact duplicate. The other option is to adjust the neckline for the back, which is what I'm going to do. For the back neckline, I'm going to make it a little higher up and I'm also not gonna make it a V-neck and that's in part because I just want a little higher up on my back, but also then that gives me options of different fronts, whether I want a V-neck or more of a scoop neck, I'll have that option just by reversing which way I wear the top. But the good news is, even if you adjust how you make your back panel, it's going to be very similar to the way you made your first panel. So even though I'm making adjustments to my back panel, the first several rows are exactly the same as the front panel. And these for me are eight rows that are 92 double crochet wide. And this is the piece that includes the shoulder strap. So you may have a different number of stitches and a different number of rows, but go ahead and start by making something that matches the way we started the first panel. So the next thing I need to do is I need to figure out how high up I want it to come on the back. And I've already held this up against me like we did for the front. So on the front, I went with 21 stitches for the shoulder strap. I'm only going to go with 14 stitches for on the back. So I'm going to count off 14 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. In this 14th stitch, I'm not going to work in. That's gonna be like a free stitch. So I'm just marking it with some yarn. So to make more of a scoop neck kind of neckline on the back, I'm going to work two rows of the decrease pattern. And then I'm going to work just evenly across with double crochet for the next several rows. Now on the front side, I had 18 rows between the shoulder straps. So in my case, I'm gonna have two rows of decreasing, 14 rows of working stitches evenly across, and then two rows of increasing. The decrease and increase rows are worked in the same manner as we did for the front, where we do those increases and decreases along the neckline and just work stitches evenly down to the bottom of the tank. And then for the rows working evenly, we're just gonna put one double crochet in every stitch. So to make sure you work the correct number of rows, you wanna consider how many rows you had between straps for the front panel. In my case, I had 18. Then if you're doing two rows of decreasing and then two rows of increasing on the other side, that's a total of four rows. So in my case, it's 18 minus four, which gives me 14 rows of working evenly in between the two decrease and two increase rows. You of course may not be aiming for 18 rows, so just take however many rows you had between straps for the front, subtract four for the two increase and two decrease rows, and that's how many rows you'll work evenly across. So I have finished crocheting the back panel here, and as you can see, I did more of like a scoop neck, kind of a square neckline here. Now, as I said, in my case, I had 18 rows in between each of the shoulder strap sections. I accidentally did three rows of decreases when I went to only do two, but it worked out fine. I did three rows of decreases, 12 rows of double crochet worked evenly, and then three rows of increases on the other side so that way it's symmetrical. And then work my eight rows for the shoulder strap. And again, when I got to the end here, I did those foundation double crochets to make it longer. This time I had to do 14 because on this side I had skipped 14 stitches. So the last thing to do with this top before we sew it all together and weave in the ends is we need to add a little bit of extra material on the side to go under the arms. Now I've already added that extra bit of fabric on the one side of this front panel and I'm gonna repeat on the opposite side here on camera. And just as a quick note, if you want to have less ends to weave in, don't fasten off when you get done with your front panel and then you can continue working with that piece of yarn to add the extra piece on the side. So the first thing to figure out how much we need for both side panels is you need to hold your panels up to yourself and guesstimate about how many rows you're going to need. Now, I don't know if I have footage of this, but I held up the front and back panel on me about where they're going to go. And then I looked at how much space was left between the panels on the sides. So let's say it was like three inches. I then measured my work to see how many rows would equal three inches or whatever the measurement was. So in my case, I guesstimated I would need to add 12 rows of double crochet for both sides. So once you know about how many rows you need to add, you have a couple of options. The first option is to not do any shaping, to not do any angles, and is to just work rectangular rows. So let's say like me, you decided that you need 12 rows per side. Then on both sides of your front panel, you're going to add six rows because you'll have six rows from the front panel, six rows from the back panel, they'll connect in the middle and that'll give you 12. So that's certainly one option to work just double crochet stitches, very similar to how we work the rest of this top. 
The other option, which is what I opted for, is a little bit more involved. You'll likely have to do some frogging, but I think it will give a nicer overall fit. And that is to add a little bit of shaping. And so basically I want to create kind of a curve along here so that way it comes in a little bit towards the waist, but then I have enough fabric for the bust and for the hips. So the first thing you need to decide is you need to hold your top up to yourself and figure out how high up you want to start. If you're working a rectangle shape and not doing any of the shaping, you want to figure out where the point is that will go beneath your armpit and mark that spot and then work rows back and forth, however many you need, and just work evenly at that point. If on the other hand, you want to do some shaping and put an angle here, in a bit of a curve along the side, we're gonna have to do a little bit more math. So first I figured out where I wanted the top part of this to come to, and so I marked that stitch. Then I counted how many stitches I had, and then we're going to divide it by six, roughly. And we're gonna have six sections where we have double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, and then mirror it. Single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet, and in the final section we'll do some decreases. So let me illustrate with mine. You likely will have different counts than what I actually end up using, but this will give you an idea of what you might be able to work. Having said that, I did make several attempts at this to play around until I got it where I think it will fit me the best. So don't be afraid to frog and redo these rows a few times. So I've already worked the side piece on this side of the front panel. Now I'm gonna work it down here and I'll kind of show you how I worked through this. So I'm gonna start along the bottom edge. And because I'm on the side where we started, I will need to join my yarn. So I'm going to make a slip knot on my hook. Now I'm gonna to go to the bottom of my first stitch, that underside there. And I worked those foundation double crochet, so it might look a little different if you work a chain, but the idea is gonna be the same. I'm gonna to go to the base of the stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then insert under that left vertical bar, pull up a loop, you're gonna over pull through two, and that's going to be that alternative turning chain, which will also count as my first double crochet. Now, based on the number of stitches I had, I'm going to start by working 13 double crochet. So that's one, two, three, 11, 12, and 13. So earlier, remember how I mentioned we're dividing it kind of into six roughly equal sections? That's my first section. So then the next section is going to be half double crochet, which will be a little bit shorter and start to create that curve shape. So I'm again doing 13. You may want to do a different number. So one half double crochet, two half double crochet, three half double crochet, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So that was my second section. So now for the third section, we're going to do single crochet. Now, because the number of stitches I need to do to get to the point up here ended up being a number that wasn't divisible by six, for my two single crochet sections, instead of doing 13 stitches like I did for the double crochet and half double crochet, I'm just going to do 12. So don't feel like you have to do all sections equal width, but I'm kind of showing a basic idea of how you can get this shaping to work for you. So I'll do 12 single crochet for my third section. So one, two, three, 10, 11, and 12. So now I've worked sections one, two, and three, the double crochet, half double crochet, and single crochet, and now I'm going to mirror that, so kind of reverse it. So now for my fourth section, I'm going to repeat a single crochet section. So for me, that means working 12 more single crochet. So one, two, three, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So that was section four. Now section five is going to be a half double crochet. And for my previous half double crochet section, I worked 13 stitches. So for section five, I will also work 13 half double crochet stitches. Again, your counts will most likely be very different than mine, but this is just to illustrate the process and to use concrete numbers so you can really see it play out. So 13 half double crochet, one half double crochet, two, three, 11, 12, split the yarn, let's redo that guy, 12, 
and 13. So that was my fifth section. Now we are on to the sixth and final section, which is double crochet. Now in the beginning here, I worked 13 double crochets, but on this side, we're going to change it up a little bit. I am going to work in the next 13 stitches, but we're going to have two decreases before the end of the row. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a sharper slant than we did for the V-neck, but to kind of start slanting it down so it can go under the arm. So I'm going to work across 13 stitches, but I'm going to do something different in the last five stitches. We're not going to work just basic double crochet in those. So in the first eight, I'm going to work just normal double crochet. So one, two, seven, and eight. So I've got five more stitches to left to work in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two double crochet decreases and then a double crochet. So for my first double crochet decrease, yarn over, insert and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, then insert in the following stitch, yarn over and insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over to pull through all three. That's the first decrease, and because I want a sharper angle here, I'm going to do two decreases in a row. So this is my second decrease. Pull through all three to finish it, and then in my last stitch here, I'm going to work just a normal double crochet. So basically what we did for this sixth section with the double crochets is we worked in the same number of stitches from this side here. So we have a total of 13 spots where we worked in, but for those last five, we did double crochet decreases in spaces nine and 10 and 11 and 12. And then 13 just gets a double crochet. So now for the next few rows, I'm gonna work a similar process where we have some decreasing here up at the top where I'm gonna work two decreases at the top of the row. And then I'll work some double crochets, half double crochets, single crochets in the middle, and then reverse it to be half double crochets and double crochets at the very end. So let me show you how I work the next couple of rows because there are a few adjustments that I make, but they're pretty simple to catch on to once you've done the first row. So I'm gonna start by turning my work. And in my first stitch, I'm going to use that alternative turning chain stitch. And that'll take the place of the turning chain and will count as my first double crochet. And then across the next four stitches, I'm going to work two double crochet decreases. So I'm going to decrease across these two stitches. And then a second decrease across these two stitches. So now to finish up the double crochet section, I'm going to work double crochets in every double crochet from the previous row. So this is one, two, five, and six. And then the next stitches there, those are half double crochets, but in the first few half double crochets, I'm also going to work double crochet stitches on this following row. So I arbitrarily went with four double crochet stitches worked into the half double crochet section. You can do a few more, a few less, and this is gonna help smooth out the rounding out of that side panel. So I'm gonna work one double crochet, two double crochet, three double crochet, and four double crochet. Now you may choose to work more double crochet or fewer double crochet into those first half double crochets, but either way, we wanna work a few double crochets on top of the half double crochet section. Now for the half double crochet section, because it's in the middle, we're gonna work half double crochets in every half double crochet of the previous row, and then half double crochet in the first few single crochets of the previous row. So since I worked four double crochet into half double crochets, at the end of the half double crochet section, I'll work four half double crochets into the single crochets, which means I'm once more going to work 13 half double crochets for this section. So this is one, two, three. This is my 11th half double crochet, 12, and 13. So once more, we had some half double crochets spill over onto the single crochet section of the previous row. Once more, I'm going with four half double crochets spilling over, but you can do more or less. 
So now for this middle section, I'm going to work single crochet stitches. And I'm gonna work one single crochet in each single crochet until I have four single crochet left. And that's then when we will swap back to half double crochet. So I'm gonna start working single crochet on down. And now I have just four single crochets from the previous row left. So that tells me it's time to swap to half double crochets because again, we want some half double crochets to spill onto the single crochet section from the other direction. So I'm gonna work 13 half double crochets. So one, two, three, and four. And those first four were worked across single crochets. Then five, six, 12, and 13. And now because we're working to the end of the row, we're just gonna put one double crochet in each stitch that remains. So again, that means I'm gonna end up with four double crochet worked into half double crochet from the previous row, which is what we want, because again, we want some of those taller stitches to spill on top of the shorter stitches to make a smoother rounding out. So I'm gonna work my way on down, and then I'll show you the following row so let me work my way on down. So now for my third row of the side panel. Once more, flipping my work, starting off with that alternative turning chain to count as our first double crochet. Finishing it off right here. And because we're at the bottom end, we're just gonna work double crochet evenly. So I'm gonna put one double crochet in each of the following stitches, and I'm gonna put a double crochet in all of the double crochets of the previous row, and then in the first few of my half double crochets of the previous row. So now that I've put a double crochet in all the double crochets from the previous row, it's time to have a few stitches spill over onto those shorter half double crochets. Now, because in the previous round, I did four stitches that spilled over, I will once more for this round do four stitches that spill over. So I'm gonna work one double crochet in each of the next four half double crochets. And I went with four, that's kind of just an arbitrary number. You may find you want to do more or fewer. So now that I've worked my double crochet section, it's time to work the half double crochet section, which is going to be 13 half double crochets. And when I work those 13 half double crochets, that will have me spill four half double crochets over onto single crochets of the previous round, which is what we want, because we want some of those taller stitches spilling over onto the shorter stitches to smooth out the height differences to make a nice smooth curve. So I'll put a half double crochet in each of the next four single crochets. This is three and four. So now I'm at my single crochet section and I'm gonna put a single crochet in each single crochet of the previous row until I have just four single crochets left unworked and then I'll swap back over to half double crochet so I can have some half double crochets spilling onto the single crochet section. So I have those four single crochets left, so time to swap over to half double crochet. And I'm gonna work 13 half double crochet because that will leave me with four half double crochet stitches unworked so I can have the double crochet spill over onto the half double crochet section. So I've got those four half double crochets left, so we'll put a double crochet into each of those. So one, two, three, and four, and I'm gonna keep working double crochets until I have five stitches left in this row. So now with my five stitches left, in the first four of those five, I'm going to work two double crochet decreases. So this is my first double crochet decrease. And join it all together. My second double crochet decrease. We'll work it all together. That leaves me with one stitch left and I'll put just a normal double crochet into it. So hopefully at this point you're kind of getting a feel for how we're creating this curved section on the side. And this is gonna make it go in at kind of the waist and then out at the bust and out at the hip section. And so we're working taller stitches at the edges, then shorter stitches, and then shortest in the middle. And then each following row, we're gonna overlap our taller stitches onto our shorter stitches. So the taller stitches are kind of coming inwards, getting a little longer, the medium ones are getting in, and then the shortest ones in the very middle there. 
So you can repeat the process I just showed for the previous three rows as many times as you want. And then what I would recommend is for your last two rows, just work double crochet because that gives it a little bit cleaner of an edge and allows for a little bit more flow. So in my case, I'm doing six rows on each side of my front and back panels because as I mentioned, I need a total of 12 rows to go across the whole width. So I'll have six rows from the front panel, six rows from the back panel. And I've worked the first three of those rows. So for row four, I'm going to work very similar to what I did for rows one through three, where I'm working a section of double crochet and then half double crochet, single crochet in the middle, half double crochet, and then double crochet. And again, don't forget to do those two decreases at the top edge of the rows. And then for my last two rows, I'm going to work just double crochet, but I'm still going to do the decreases up here at the top. So I'll work my two decreases, but then just put one double crochet and everything on down. So I'm gonna finish up this section off camera, but the important thing is that whatever you work the first time, so this was my first section that I worked for creating the shaping, I want to repeat this on the opposite side and on both sides of the back panel. So make sure that you're keeping notes or you're keeping track or are able to go back and count so that way you can duplicate it so that way everything ends up symmetric and fitting well for this top. So let me finish crocheting this stuff and then it's time to put it all together and then we'll get to wear our finished tank tops. So I finished crocheting the front panel, adding those little side pieces and I also added my side pieces to the back. So now all that's left is sewing it together. You can use whatever type of join that you want for sewing together. I'm going to use a whip stitch and the areas that we need to sew are the tops of the straps on both sides. And then we're gonna sew down the side, lining up stitch for stitch. Now as a quick note, I would recommend starting up here and what you can do is you can seam all the way down on down and then if you want to, you can leave it unseamed at the bottom to give it a little flare if you want to add that touch to yours. So I'm gonna seam off camera cuts kind of boring to watch, weave in my ends, and then I'll show you how it turns out. Some final thoughts on this tank top before we wrap up the video. So first I accidentally made the top too low, like the V-neck, and I was thinking about adding a border or something along the top to bring the neckline up a little bit. But then for filming on camera, I wanted to have a cami underneath. I would probably wear this without anything underneath on like the beach or something like that, but just for filming and posting online, I wanted a little more coverage. So I put a cami on underneath and I actually think it looks so cute layered over the cami. And of course you can adjust the neckline however you want. Just just know that the weight of the body of the tank top can stretch those straps out a little bit and make things sit a little lower. So keep that in mind when you're deciding how long to make your straps. Having said that, you of course can add edging or whatever extra decorative details you want to your project. You could put a border on it, a border on the neckline, at the hem, however you want to customize it. But this tank top is so comfortable. It feels really soft and nice on my skin and it's not too heavy and hot. So it's still lightweight enough for summer. But that is today's project. I hope y'all enjoy this tutorial. If you do make this tank top, I would love to see you rocking this tank top. So be sure to tag me if you post on Instagram. I'll pop up with my Instagram handle there on screen. So be sure to tag me so I can see your amazing creations. Until next time, happy crafting.